Hey folks, this is Noble Rambler, and welcome to RimWorld. It has been far too long since we had a RimWorld series going here on the channel. First one I did was Alpha 12, and that one was more of a tutorial, just teaching how the game works, and you know, basically give us some tactics and ideas, but uh, before I really got very deep into that one, Alpha 13 came out. So, shut that one down, started up 13, and began what turned into something a little different than I had expected it to. It, it became more of a, of a soap opera, it became more of a story that uh, different subscribers I, you know, named the characters after them and they jumped in and started role playing their characters and, and leaving uh, little uh, uh, lines of, of, a, of a, like a play down there of what the characters were thinking when uh, when different things happened in the episode. It was really a lot of fun. So I'm going to try to do something like that again here. We're starting off with a group of characters that uh, are basically my patrons, uh, the ones that uh, have have pledged at the level of named character. So they're going to be the original uh, crash landing survivors here. And after this, any uh, subscribers that are watching this and, and enjoying what you're seeing, leave me a comment down in the in the comment section that you'd like to be part of this. And, and I'll start building a list. And as characters become available, whether they... Uh, are you know crashing in landing pods or they're running into the scene needing to be rescued or or they're prisoners that are coerced to become part of us then I'll start putting those subscriber names in there um, either subscriber names or a name of your choice make sure it's family friendly though in fact family friendly is the way that I will run the story as well so we're not going to be a, uh, a a tribe of cannibals or a or some kind of a drug den or anything like that. It's going to be a pretty clean story that's going to run here. Um, got a backstory to, to deal with here before we turn the game on. And then after that, we'll go through world and you know what the seed name is in case you want to get a game going that's similar to it. But uh, let's start here. A small group of adventurers from diverse backgrounds and each for their own personal reasons made a pact to sell everything pool their funds and skills, and set off to carve out their own little piece of the verse. Months of research pointed them to a distant planet where they could live life as they chose. There were rumors of gold and silver being plentiful, but as well swarming with cutthroat pirates and locals that despised outsiders. Passage was booked on board the transport ship Freedom's Drift. Supplies for the expedition were bought and loaded, and their journey began. At the end of their long voyage, they were abruptly wa awakened from cryptosleep to the sound of emergency klaxons. As the Freedom's Drift entered orbit, a catastrophic systems failure destroyed the ship, and only a few escape pods launched for the planet below. Not all made it, and now there was certainly no turning back. Counted among the survivors, Dr. Tomislav is one of the adventurers. A physician by day, a researcher by night. Inventing new ways to turn perfectly good appendages into bionic masterpieces is merely a hobby of his. Handy, another one of the adventurers. Handy in most forms of repair and construction. Give her a few planks and some basic supplies and she'll construct anything from a comfortable chair to a grand mess hall to a solar-powered turret system. Rabbit, adventurer. A skilled horticulturalist which is a fancy way of saying he grows the best potatoes. He's also been called an animal whisperer, giving him the advantage when hunting those ferocious rim rabbits. Chef Shantigo, the last of our surviving adventurers. An accomplished top-tier chef, he can render rim rabbits into delicate racks of dandelion glazed baby back ribs. Mm. As well, his hobbyist studies in geology have given him a taste for shiny rocks so he's no stranger to a well-balanced pick. Then we have SCO Klaus, the only surviving member of the ship crew, the communications officer of the Freedom's Drift. His social skills brought him to the top rank of his department, making him a convincing negotiator. And he can shoot. So there's our crew right up there. And probably not much more than I can do until that's clicked, right? Can I click world? No. So let's get this thing going. Motley crew. 
Now, is it going to show me the seed from here? Um, there. Yeah. Seed, noble. Capital N, capital L, capital E. I played with a lot of different combinations of seed and, uh, seeds, and it turns out that uh, capitalizing different letters changes the seed too. So uh, capital does count there. And it puts us in a place that is close to quite a few different biomes. I wanted to get into one of the mountains. And if I click away, so you can barely see the mountain down there. I didn't want to get one that was like this, you know, full a mountain everywhere. I've tried some of those, and it's there's very little uh, grassland around to play with here entirely in the mountain. Last map was, I think, small hills in Alpha 13. And there weren't enough hills there to get enough resources to finish the game. Not even to build the ship. So we waited forever for more iron and plasteel to come in. Finally, I just uh, went into the, the, the you know the developer's mode or debug mode and ported it in just to just to be able to uh, finish the the series. So I wanted a, a mountain map, but I wanted as small a mountain as I could find. So that spot looked pretty good. It's kind of like this, you know, half and half, rather than almost the entire map. So that gets us near where well, we're in. Temperate forest gets us near boreal forest, gets us near tundra, gets us near tropical, and go out a little bit further, it gets us near swamp over here and there, two different kinds of swamp. And who are our enemies in this map? Factions. Another reason I chose this map is I can pronounce the names. <laughs> Some of the names in RimWorld. Wow. Um, of course, there's a challenge right there. The Crick. Croy Boar, Crick Croy Boar Mountains. There's a mouthful. But we are in, what would we call this? I guess it really isn't a name for this zone right here. We're not far from the Cragnose Grove and the Orange Tioga Swamp, well, Boreal Forest, okay. And zoom out a little bit, we've got the Oga Barrens out here. So, kind of neat the way they've redone things to, uh, to do the map out here so you can Get a sense of what's going on. And you've got the, the icy ocean out there. And the grand porcupine ocean. What else have we got here? A coba brush. Let's see if we can go around the around the world here and find ourselves again. The red shell desert, the Jaguar Range. So they got some good names out here. And we, if I find the Cragnose Grove, we're just northeast of it. Right in there. That's us. And Factions, enemies, well, okay, people who don't hate us, let's, let's start there. The, hmm, Irwathotna, Irwa, Irwathotna, Irwathotna, we'll go with that, Irwathotna People's Federation, they are an outlander union, what's it say about them? These people have lived here for decades or centuries and have lost most of the technology that brought them to this world. They usually work with simple mechanical tools and defend themselves with advanced gunpowder weapons. They are concerned with the practical matters of trade, trust, and survival. Okay, good to know. We've got here the Rana of the River tribe. These people have been here a very long time. Maybe their ancestors crashed here a thousand years ago. Maybe they survived some cataclysm that destroyed a technological civilization here. In any case, the tribals are mostly nomadic people who live off the land using primary tools and weapons. Some tribes are more aggressive than others. Many are open to trade and alliance, alliances, even with strange people like yourselves. Close cooperation or recruitment will be very difficult because of the vast socio-technological and linguistic gap between the tribals and yourselves. So it's, it's hard to recruit them. Despite their apparent technological weakness, the tribals can be dangerous enemies and valuable friends because of their skills with low-tech warfare, their numbers, and their hardiness. Their numbers are the big thing. You get toward end game and 50 of those things come at you. I tell you, you're, you're in trouble. Um, we've got here the Accord of Minyo tribe. They don't like us. So green and all the, the shades of red, green, orange, red, are the ones to watch out for right there. The Saws, they're a pirate band. Let's see what the pirates are. A gang of bandits. Yeah, Pirates don't sow, they don't build. They rarely trade. They enrich themselves mostly by raiding and robbing the more productive groups in the area. Their technology level depends mostly on 
who they've managed to steal from recently. Uh -huh. Mostly they carry gunpowder weapons, though the luckier ones may have advanced energy weapons, and some may just like to stab people at close range. <laughs> okay, watch out for them and the saber donkeys. Mm -hmm. So basically, blue, purple, and yellow. Or purplish and yellow, we're blue, okay, are good. So these guys right here are good, and right there. So we got to watch out for all of these. Okay. Um, menu, factions, history? Don't have a history yet. Okay. World, we've seen. We are in. Okay. Um, pop out of world, research, animals, assign, restrict, work, and architect. I guess we're here. Let's take a look at this map. Now, for those who haven't played this before, WASD moves you around. Your score wheel zooms you in. And if you watch down over here in the corner... Everywhere you go, it'll tell you what you're seeing. This square right here is grass. It's 18% grown. There's soil, so its walking speed is 87%. It slows you down a little bit versus something like this, which is rough marble, walking speed of 93%. Um, and back to that grass, uh, its fertilizer quality is 100%. We get into, that's mud, rich soil. There it is. Rich soil. Fertility is 140%. So right there is where you want to put your gardens. And then how brightly lit it is. Right now the sun is still coming up at 6 in the morning. So we'll hit 100% before long. We're 72 right now. And then all of the stone, like this one right here. This, that one's marble. It's rough marble. Meaning it's not, you know unmined. It's unsmooth. It's just a rough stone wall. It has a thin roof over the top meaning this is not a very tall mountain. Think of RimWorld as a three-dimensional world, but they're, you're just slicing out a maybe a 10-foot tall two-dimensional slice out of it. That's what you would see. There's a mountain above all of this, but you're only going to see the part that's at their eye level. That's how you got to think when you play this game. You mine out this whole section right here. There's a mountain still above it, and it's going to fall down on top of you. So you've got to stay within certain limits. Um, I try to stay, you know, less than 10 wide by 10 wide. I think you can go up to, I don't know what it is, 12, 13, 14. There's, there's a point at which you've gone one too many and you regret trying to push your, your limits there. Um, the planet is a living planet. All of these are towns. All of these are tribes. These are settlements. They move around. They interact with you. They'll come roaming in. They'll want to trade. They'll want to fight. So there's there's a, you know, quite a level of interaction with the peoples around you. And it's also living in the sense of what's right here in front of you. As I let this thing go, all these guys are going to start moving. We've got raccoons. We've got emus. A large flightless bird with beady eyes on its ugly face. With its bad attitude, it is... The jerk of the natural world. Really? I hadn't read that description before. That's a comparison something like an ostrich. So this, the developer of this game doesn't like emus. Um, the largest unmodified bird species. Ostriches are known for their fast run, huge eggs, and powerful kick. But then you've also got all the stats on it. No, we don't scroll. Um, their race, their running speed. Um what temperatures they can survive in, their immunity animal filth rate. I don't remember that before. So it's, again, I haven't really played this since Alpha 13. So there's going to be an awful lot of the game that I'm going to say, I don't remember that before. So you guys may have to help uh, catch me up to, get me up to speed here. Their body size, their carrying capacity, what they eat. How much leather you're going to get out of them when you uh, when you skin them? How long they'll live? Their market value if you were to capture them and sell them. Um, okay, body size versus mass. Interesting. How much meat's in them? Minimum handling skill. So you've got to have a handling skill of eight or more in order to tame them, hunt or tame, and then to train them afterward if training is even a possible thing. Um, it's not listing it as such. Right now, I don't know if that changes when you uh, when you tame them. Um, trainable 
intelligence. So how t intelligent of a creature are they? Their wildness. The more wild they are, the harder they are to tame. And then their military strengths, their chance of dodging your melee attack and, and what have you. Their health. So consciousness, moving, manipulation, eating, sight, breathing, blood filtration, blood pumping, and metabolism. All the different things that are monitored by RimWorld for us and the animals and, and your enemies and what have you. Everything it breathes. And records. Time is a... Are these records of that animal or is this... I would think it's the ostrich. Hmm. We'll see how that works as we get further into the game. Whether that's a cumulative over, you know, for the whole colony or just what that is. But what have we got in here? We've got a bunch of ship parts that have fallen down with the, the wreck of the uh, the Freedom's Drift and other ships that have crash landed around here. Here's something new to 18. Before, what kind of made a mountain map boring is you got this huge massive mountain that filled up, you know, a third to a half of the map and that was it. This beta, not alpha anymore, but beta, Tynan has decided that this is the end of the uh, of the adding of major new systems to the game. Now it's just a matter of balancing the game out and making it run really well. With this beta, we have added cavern systems. So now we'll roam through these mountains and there will already be hives with mega spiders and spilipedes and these guys, the mega scarabs. These guys are not, uh, not something to be trifled with, especially if they continue to expand and grow and they take over this whole area. Make it even harder to, to clean them out afterward. Don't know what their rate of growth is going to be and how prolific they're going to be. But, um, yeah, so we've got, ooh, we've got a herd of deer over here. And more caverns and more bugs. Let's read one of these. The Mega Spider. He should be the, uh, the biggest, the most dangerous of all of them. Not actually a spider. This Mega Spider is a genetically engineered giant insectoid the size of a bear. Designed for heavy work and combat, it's thick, chitinous armor makes it hard to kill while its long deadly ripper blades make it deadly so here's all of his abilities combat his armor and so apparel armor so he can deflect what's this say here trying to determine 10 percent of what 10 percent of your of your attack he's going to deflect is that how that works i'll have to figure that out anyway Lots of specs, lots of, of information on everything that's in the game. So, kind of nice we landed near this. We've got a place for a, for a few beds right off the back. It's one of the first things we've got to do, and it'll tell us here in a moment, is that we've got to uh, make a place for them to sleep. We've got to get all this stuff uh, under cover. So, things like the food and, and medicine and things that aren't, uh, you know unlike the silver that will degrade in the sun and the rain and, and the, the elements you've got to get them under cover and under a roof so we've got we got a lot of building to do um, let's start off by unforbidding everything so double click and F will unforbid so right now they're forbidden so hit the F or click this and now they're available to pick up and again these guys were planning this trip so that's the kind of the backstory Though you can imagine they planned a lot more than what they actually got a hold of. You know, the ship blew up, and so very very little of it actually uh, got brought down. But uh, they brought down what they could in the time they had. So they got some basic supplies to get them going. There's a little more wood over there. All right, that's all the forbidden stuff. I saw a red something over here. Now, what are you? You are a mega sloth. So, cute and cuddly, I'm guessing. Giant solitary herbivore. Long extinct after being wiped out by the natives of Earth's American continent. The megasloths... A megasloth was later brought back using advanced cloning and artificial gestators. Okay, so we have megasloths again. We've got wild boars, we've got squirrels. And yeah, don't let them fool you. They're kind of like the... Uh, the killer rabbits in a, a Monty Python movie. They'll take you down. <laughs> We've got uh, some wild heel root over here. So think of herbal medicine. And people have been here before. So we will find artifacts. We'll find uh, different uh, buildings that have been here and long since abandoned. We've got compacted steel. 
What else is hiding around in here? That's steel. Um, there'll be gold and silver around. There'll be plasteel, which is a much harder, stronger something to work with than steel is. I'm trying to... Nothing's really jumping out at me. There's more steel. So we're going to have to go searching for a lot of it. We've got a building that's kind of hidden over here. I don't know what's inside. It goes right into the mountain. Okay. Where do we want to try to live? That's kind of your first choice here. Now, do we... Well, we'll bed down into here, but where do we go? That's kind of important. You're going to have enemies that land, uh, kind of like we did here in, in pods, or they'll come running in from, you know, the next, uh, the next map tile over, just moving their way through, and, and, uh, most of the time they're not going to be, uh, happy people. They're going to want to take advantage of our situation, and, and, uh, especially when the pirates come in. So we're going to need something that's defendable, like if we were to grab this area here and put a wall there and a wall there. Though that does give us... Well, it doesn't necessarily give us two fronts. Are you rich? You're rich soil. Ooh, I was worried you were mud, but you're the good stuff. Brambles. I don't remember brambles before. We've got wild dandelions, grass, brambles. We've got bushes that will have berries on them as we get... Uh, we're in April, May right now. So I'm thinking... Oh, there we go. Days passed since your arrival, zero. Uh, the year is divided into four quadrums of 15 days each. Quadrums are the same everywhere, while seasons are different in different places. Gotta wrap my head around that one. April, May is spring. Jugust is summer. September is fall. And December is winter. That's an interesting way of doing it. Rabbits. Yeah, they're scary too. Turkeys. Turtles. It's, it takes, it is so hard to kill one of these. You shoot at that thing forever. And it will just keep chomping and biting at your ankle until it, it takes you down and then starts chomping at your ear or something. So they're not to be trifled with either. Nothing on this world is to be trifled with. You attack a wild boar, they, there's a risk that they're all going to come at you and uh, go berserk on you and take you down. Anyway, I'm thinking we want to dive into here, but... What are you now? You're rich soil. So all this is rich soil here. That's rich soil in there. This might be our final destination. This is a river, not a creek. So the darker colors you cannot cross over. It's too deep. But we can get across right here. This looks like final destination to me. It really does. Kind of like banished. You, once the game starts, you hit pause and you start planning things. So I do that with RimWorld as well. This is all mud. So this is quite different. Walking speed, 52%, and you're not going to get anything to grow or build there. So you got to be careful of getting too much mud around where you're, uh, where you're settling because you'll find a lot of area that can't be built on. Swamp, I'm guessing, is going to be very similar. Yep, I think we're going to head down this way and get into here. We need a place to spend the night, and we need a place to get all this stuff undercover. Then we need to think about migrating all of this stuff into this area somewhere. Those are all regular stone walls. There's nothing uh, built in here. There's no walls. Okay, river goes through there. Okay, as far as I know, there is still nothing in the game that deals with water. So they don't drink water, don't need to store it, don't use it for cooking or anything like that. That's something that'd be nice if they could implement before the game is is uh, finally done. Though I guess desert maps would be pretty difficult to survive in if they did that. Okay, yeah, we're going for there. Let's get this one going over here. Probably not going to get a lot accomplished this first episode. It's basically just kind of teaching the game and then we'll get into, into moving forward. And I haven't played myself very much since I turned off Alpha 13 for the last time. So I've got a little catching up to do myself to remind myself how to do all of this. We've got a place for a door here. We need five beds. When they sleep in the same room, it really gets them kind of irritated. I, you know, Some of them snore. Someone walks in the door after others are asleep. It wakes them all up and they get really cranky. So as soon as you can get individual rooms, the better. Um, 
we're going to have to all sleep in that one for right now. We could put some individual rooms up, maybe out over here. Though it would make, it'd make sense to do it over here. Hmm. If we did it over here, though, we'd have the freedom to build anything we want and start tunneling in. Hmm. Now, Alpha 12, when I did that series, I was going to tunnel in, and I had laid out an elaborate um, colony, and then we never got a chance to do it. Alpha 13 uh, introduced the bugs and the danger of digging in because these guys will, will come and take you out. They'll just appear. They'll spawn inside anything that used to be mountain. So since then, I've learned a few tactics of building a, you know, a hallway going in and a second hallway alongside of it with an occasional opening and, and turrets, and then kind of a turret center between rooms with a with an, an access way so that we can walk into the space with the turrets. If a room is full of bugs, we just kind of bust open the wall if the turrets take care of them. So I, I think it's getting into the mountain is kind of doable now. I think that'd be a wise place to go. Um, Let's get this going here for, for the night, though. Let's put in a door right there using wood. Let me do that again. Door, and you've got a choice of what materials that you want to build it out of. And it, it's going to give you a list of the materials the the materials that qualify that you actually have. When you get more materials, the more choices will be in there. It, it defaults to, wall, to, to wood, which is nice. I think it used to default to steel, and you always had to switch to wood. Otherwise, you're wasting all of your steel. So, I don't think we can easily get five beds in there. We should be able to take this down pretty easy. So, let's, um, let's grab orders and claim. Where's the flag? Let's claim all this as ours, and let's go ahead and deconstruct that. That'll be easy. to leave a stone wall out over there. And I'm not going to run the game for a while because we had a lot to do in the first day or two. And I don't want them just wandering around aimlessly doing nothing while I'm trying to plan all this. So, let's plan it all out, then turn it on and watch them and let them go. Then we'll... We take a look at their characters, and uh, or maybe next episode we'll go through all their characters because that's half an episode all by itself. So let's get this laid out. Furniture, we need beds, and we're going to make it again out of wood. So I could roll down and click right there if I wanted wood or something else. E rotates you, and don't need to hold anything in order to get multiples, it'll stay there. I want to keep them separate. So there's three, four is going to go there, and that's going to go away, so that means that I can go ahead and put five right there. So four will go there. So that'll be five beds. Then we need storage. One of the easiest ways to get a, a covered area is to take a natural um, bay or, or whatever you want to call this, an alcove in the mountain, and just close off the entrance right there. So we'll do that, though I'd say the closer this direction, the better. May as well get it all done the first day. Let's do that. So structure, build a wall, say, out over here to, to there. Do that. Stick a door in that right there and down over here. Make it easy to go through this thing. Okay. And let's make it easier to get these trees out of our way by saying, well, we'll try chop. If a tree's not mature, that one's not. Let me show you. This one right here, a poplar tree, its growth rate is 41% because the sun's not fully up yet, and it's 96% grown. This one over here is only 39% grown. So if I say that I want to chop down trees in this area, it will pick all of the mature trees, but it's not going to pick the one that isn't mature enough to give you a, a full load of, of uh, material out of it. So I'll go ahead and say chop down, say, those right there. We're going to have to manually go in and, and cut plant on that one and that'll take care of that then we can hit zone and stockpile and stockpile that whole area right there you can then click storage and choose what's going to go in that stockpile and there's lots of choices in there what kind of raw food goes in there well let's what kind of meat all right so there's all the different kinds of meat uh, okay what kind of vegetables goes in there what kind of animal products and it just goes on and on. There's there's so many different things available in this game. It has really grown up since since the first time I played it. I think what alpha I started RimWorld in. It was it was way early. Way early. Um boy. Six, seven, maybe? I don't know, it was, it was a long, long time ago. Twelve was many versions. 
after I had first got it. So over here, we're just going to use whatever the default is for the uh, stockpile. That'll be good enough there. And then, what else do we need to get them doing? Let me kind of work through this and remind myself. Um, growing. We need to get growing going. So rabbit is our is our uh, horticulturalist if we want to get fancy about it. So let's put up some some grow areas, some grow zones. Fifty is kind of what I shoot for. So what is there's sixty. We'll do something. Something along those lines right there. Normally I leave a space in between, but I don't want to waste any of this rich soil. So I'm going to go ahead and do something kind of like that. Uh, let's go a little higher for this one. Right in there. In fact, let's do it like this. 66, there's 55. We'll do that. Oh, didn't realize what I was doing. If you click, if you create a new grow zone that touches the old one, it just expands and becomes part of it. If you don't touch it, then you get a entirely different one. So let's delete that one, delete that one, try this all over again. One way to get around that is to do every other one. So let's head back into here again. We're going to grab that 9x6 we had before. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's go out to, oh, about there. I don't know if I got them all. Let's actually go to there. Okay. So something like that. Then one, two, three, four, five, something like no, oh, something like that. Okay. Now we can go back over here and do that one. Then if I guess if I just click away somewhere, there we go, and then go back into it. Then I can Where is that one? That one ends right there. Let's go to there. All right, you're going to be something along those lines. Okay, maybe a spot right there of it I missed. Otherwise, um, we are touching there, so let's do one down over here. All right, and then, no, I'm going to have to click away. There we go, and we'll do this one over here. And does that cover it all? Looks like it covers about everything but something right there. That gave us what? One, two, three. Did you join up? Ah, you joined up. Okay, let's, hmm, tell you what, we'll just leave it, okay, that'll just be a big one. Now, there was a modifier for, I think it was corn, corn, a large grain plant which produces ears of delicious yellow seeds, takes a relatively long time to grow, but yields lots of food and takes a long time to spoil, so it'll, it will, uh, it can go unrefrigerated for a while, I think is what they're trying to say. It needs fertile soil to grow well. Was there anything else that needed that? Now, fertile soil, I'm trying to remember if that makes it grow faster or if it gives you more product when it's done. I think it's more product. We'll have to see about that. Let's make you corn. You're going to be corn. <clears throat> now, actually all of them are going to be, but if we get something that's going to be outside of this, what do we want that to be? Um, important things to get going. Heel root, minimum uh, growing skill of eight, and Rabbit has spent his life growing, so he's he's definitely got that skill. Um, lost you right there. Heel root, a slow growing plant which yields herbal medicine when harvested. Heel root has selectively bred, it been was selectively bred for centuries by settlers. It is sometimes also called healer's hand by tribespeople, a nickname it owes to its five major medicinal virtues which they're not going to tell us, but uh, hill root. We're going to go in there, right there. And foods that you can eat without cooking. Strawberries. Delicious even when raw. Okay, so let's get strawberries going in there. Got another one up in there. What else do we need going? Rose and daylilies are for adding beauty, I believe. Don't think there's any eating any of these. Um, must be replanted. Beautiful cultivated flower. Some flowers you can eat. Not sunflowers, but some flowers. Uh, rice, though, we want to get going. So, um, a low grain plant that thrives in rich soil and yields fast food, but is not nice to eat uncooked. So, we do need to cook that one. So, we don't want as much of that, but it does grow quickly. So, you're going to be rice. Over here, 
we've got and there's something else to show you click once you get various layers going on here if there was a person standing there it would click the person then it would click the tree behind it if you clicked again and then again we're going to get the the growing zone or whatever's behind that so you know picture from up in the air and working your way down to ground level it just works its way through all the layers that are in there anyway you are still sitting at potatoes we've got just these two left because that goes around there is nothing over here so we have that one and that one left don't do that now um potato rice corn strawberry hay grass let's go with potato for the one and over here we want cotton going don't know if i want to waste it on the good soil though um it's not necessary let's put cotton somewhere else let's get one more round of food coming out of this we're 30 60 right on our grow zone here click there colony why did i not oh, i gotta click it twice okay so terrain here we are mountainous river versus creek which is like right over there which you can walk through at all points river can get too deep to walk through in some areas um take us 14 hours to move across the whole map is that what it's trying to say there I know some of the uh, it has to do with with you know the vegetation that's that's in there. So places like I think the desert. Is there a desert nearby? Where are you? Well, shrubland it takes one hour to go across that area. So that uh, gives you a difference between how uh, how easy and smooth it is to move through there versus to get through. Click you a couple times there through something with all the brambles and the and uh, all the trees that we've got. There's limestone, granite, marble here. Anyway, 30 to 60 days. So half of the year from 6th of April, May to 6th of September is all that we get for growing. Then we're gonna have to grow indoors in some fashion because it'll be too cold for, uh, for growing, which means we're gonna have to get some clothes made here real soon too and get warmed up. Anyway, let's get back into the, well, world is the one, what is the other one? Map tile? A colony maybe colony so plant potato what is the other crop we want so we've got two of the corn coming hay grass we're going to want for animals cotton we're going to want somewhere else not going to get into hops or smoke leaf or any of these and we don't need the trees or any of that we've got plenty of trees so let's just get another round of strawberries so another round of something that we can eat without cooking it. And let's set up two quick other growing zones. Where to? All this is taken. And... I'm trying to decide where I want to put power and put other things in here. Could be a wind turbine in here and a wind turbine in here. Hmm. Let's go... Trying to see my zones over here. We got a little bit right there. So let's grab a little bit that was left there. And we'll make you something like cotton. And one more. Actually, click away first. And then grab this one and put you where? We'll go from this corner down into something like that. Okay. And you can be. What was the other one? Hay grass. We got them all now. Rice, potato, corn, strawberry, hay grass, cotton, heel root. Yeah, we got them. All right. Um, so that takes care of getting stuff under a roof. Takes care of the beds, except for the one when we tear that one down. Takes care of getting the initial planting started so they can begin growing. There, there's a time limit for when that runs out. I think that's all that's truly got to be done before we get going. We'll plan out the real colony a couple episodes from now. Orders. We're going to run out of wood soon. So you kind of want to clear the, the trees out from where the enemies are going to shoot into you. Think of it that way. Take away their cover. Leave your own cover. So that's one tactic to use. And at first, we're going to be hunkered down to this side of the river. Later, we're going to expand, probably get into this area. So for now, I would say let's clear out some of the trees in this area for wood. Um, let's set up some initial mining. We can snip off a couple of these just to give us a little more room in there. Um, 
More steel would be nice to get mined out. You're, that's right, you're also uh, rich soil. We'll take advantage of you later. Is there any steel down in here? There is some. Okay, so let's take out a square like that. It's going to expand into a large vein in here somewhere. A load of it. So we have another group of it there, and I see it goes down that way. So head off into there and see where else that goes. Just to give our miners something to do. Otherwise, everybody else will be hauling. Oh, there's something else we need to do. Work. All right. For those who have not played before, RimWorld gives you two different kinds of work schedules. A simple one, basically yes or no. Do you want them to be a warden or not? Or do we want them to be a warden before or after? Want them to be something else? So get to go through and fine-tune exactly what they are or are not going to do. Hmm... That one I'll do just initially. Later when we go through and, and read all their descriptions and see just who our characters are, then we'll go through and fine-tune them even more. But right off the bat, everybody is going to fight fires. So that is a yes for all. Everybody, but some characters are not willing to. And some characters are the opposite. They're pyromaniacs. They want to set fires. <laughs> you don't want those in your colony if you can avoid it. But anyway, let's... Priority one on most of these first ones. Flick means to run out there and flick a switch when I give the order to. And first one, closest one available, you want to be able to do that. You need to turn your turrets on because enemies have arrived. You don't want one person assigned to it who's eventually going to get there. You want the one who's right next to it to grab it. Otherwise, Doctor. Tomislav is our doctor. So he is number one there. Nobody else, well, I think Rabbit had a little bit of doctoring skills. So we can make him, we'll set him as a four. Four, we have one to four in our choices. Four means that I can grab him and say, go and bandage this person, and he'll do it. All these other ones will say they're not qualified to because I haven't given them any priority. So the better qualified they are, the better job they do, like construction. Handy is our constructor. So he's got a skill of nine out of 20. Someone who has a skill of like three out of 20. Well, there's a couple of sixes. You are a five and you are a four. So a four out of 20 is going to get the job done, but has a much greater chance of uh, making a mistake when it's done and destroying some of the materials and failing at it. Or just doing a really shoddy job. And the better quality the job, the better it is to the environment that it's in. It's, it's prettier. It's, it's uh, just more functional. It, it does a better job. And so they're all rated in, in scales depending on how good a job it was done when it was made. So you got to put your best, quality, your best skills into the best positions or you'll end up with a bunch of mediocre work that nobody's going to be satisfied with. And speaking of satisfied, you'll have a whole list of, of uh, traits here in the sense of you know, feeling bad, negative four. You know, there'll be a whole variety of negatives and positives that will swing their moods up and down. And good quality chair and table and, and a bed to sleep in will sway these to the better mood range. So you want to think about that when you're when you're assigning people. But let's go through this real quick. Then uh, we'll turn them loose and that'll probably end this initial episode of the series. So Handy is going to be our lead constructor. She's not great at cooking, 4 of 20, so get your, your, your cook level skill down too low and they'll get food poisoning. Um, is okay with a gun, but not the best, so we're not going to be doing any hunting. But um, I'll leave it there as the possibility if I need her to, to shoot a crazed animal running at, at everybody and she happens to be the closest one, then at least a 4 will allow me to tell her to do it. Um, of course, I could also draft her into it that way, but you know what I mean. Growing, capable of it, so we'll make that a two. She's not constructing. I want her to be growing or mining. Smithing is something we're not going to get into yet, so we'll leave all these down at threes. Um, hauling, though. Hmm. She's going to be busy almost all the time, so otherwise I'd say that would be a one. Now, something else to think about here. The game looks at this list from left to right. So it's going to go through and find all the first ones. And there's there's no fire, so we don't need to worry about that. You're not injured, so we don't have to worry about it being a patient. You're not uh, healing from a sickness, so we'll skip that one. There's no switch to flick, so we'll skip that one. And just 
I get handy as a one. No, 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 no. Wait a minute here. You're capable of it. Okay. That turned that off. Anyway, so it moves around. Here's the first one that qualifies. There's something to build. So you can go through it that way. And then when there's no more building left, it'll start over again go through the, the first two. Okay, let's go grow. Then mine. But if there was a one over here, it would skip all those twos and go from that one to that one. And then go back and go through all the twos. So the game is constantly searching to see what qualifies for the next job for her to do. So it's, it's in that sense, you can really fine-tune what, uh, what you want done here. And you don't want everything set as a one. Or nothing is a one in that sense. But there are certain things that are done no matter what. And this is that group. Though I will say for the doctor, I will take patient or bed rest. Which one is it? Let me read that. Rest in bed to recuperate from non-immediately life-threatening medical problems. Patient, go to a medical bed for treatment if you have an immediately life-threatening... Okay, this one I'm going to take down to a two. There are times when the doctor's injured, but everybody else is about to die. And you really need to save that one's life, even though the doctor's injured. But as soon as the doctor's injured, he's going to go lay in a bed and have someone repair him. So the doctor has got to got to work his way down the priority system before he himself can be, or herself, can be uh, healed. So I always take the doctor down one notch as patient. Okay, um, working my way through here. Let's just do the obvious. Klaus is going to be the warden. He has the most social skills. He's also good at hunting, so put him as a one there. That may become a two later, depending on how the rest of this works. Handling is a no... And constructing, he can use a fallback on constructing. Um, though mining, probably going to need a lot of miners, so I'm going to leave that as a two. Growing, it might be helpful to get as many out here growing as possible until everything's planted. So we'll do that. Although I do want hauling as a pretty high priority too. Let's do that for now. Until everything is hauled into the storage. And cleaning is a going to be a priority as well to keep their uh, their moods up and I would think the doctor has is going to be uh, take you down there is going to be uh, quite uh, uh, concerned about uh, mess as well as the chef so that makes sense in a role play manner everybody else can do some hauling um, so working my way back if your rabbit is going to be the lead grower and he's also going to be good at handling animals, so he's going to be up in that area too. And he's going to be probably responsible for some of the hunting. So let's do something like that with those two. Um, mining does have the ability to do it, so we'll do that as well. And everybody gets the joy of plant cutting when I need trees taken down. You're definitely qualified to do it. Um, I would say the gardener would be more apt to than the others. Chef, Shantigo, you are my cook. You probably going to be too busy to go hunting, but I'll leave it as a possibility. One thing you don't want to do is have a bunch of hunters. You don't, you know, the game is not going to let either of these hunt until all their number ones are satisfied. So that's not going to happen in a while. But when you turn them loose hunting and you say, let's go hunt this herd of wild boars wherever they went. They're in here, right in here. One will sit over here and start shooting one over there. One will sit over here and start shooting one over there, and they end up shooting each other. So you got to be aware of what they're doing. you got to babysit that little bit. Work. Let's finish off over here. So chef and doctor. So I think that's a functional group right there of work orders for now. Our researcher is most likely going to be Thomas Lava, our doctor, because there's not going to be a lot of doctoring to do. So that's going to be his fallback. Whereas Shantigo is also really good at mining. So that's probably going to be his fallback. We'll see how that works. Otherwise, these two are capable of it. Okay, so with that, is there anything else to deal with? I don't have any night owls. So I don't need to set their sleep time to a you know a, a time during the day. I do want to put joy in here. This is the time when they they take a break and they just rest. Or not not rest as in sleep, but rest as in uh, de-stress. They might play chess. They might take a walk. What have you? I've learned that if you have them do it at the same time, though it's kind of annoying that all labor, all all progress ends for a while. They do tend to socialize. 
And when they socialize, then they tend to interact with each other. And you start getting them liking each other. So RimWorld even keeps track of what their relationship is to each other and whether one slighted them. So who is this? Handy had a nice chat with Klaus already in those first few seconds after landing. So what do we have here? So Handy, Klaus, plus 21. Why did that go down? Opinion of Klaus went down after that nice chat. Okay, so apparently it wasn't all that nice. <laughs> <laughs> but they will get to where they are either best friends, they'll even uh, date and try to marry each other, they will um, they will become enemies of each other, they will have get into a really bad mood and slight someone, and that'll put them into a bad mood, and then they don't want to work anymore, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of drama that happens here, which really makes the game interesting. So I don't need to do anything with their sleep right now. There was, there is the tactic of turning all of this off and let them do anything they want whenever they want. But it is kind of nice to know that there are certain times of day when everybody will be well rested, well fed, and capable of taking on a, a major project. So I do tend to to continue to to run a uh, a rigid schedule. You can restrict them to a certain area. So inside of a of a secure building when an attack comes in you could send everybody there to hide if that's the way you want to play it i usually when attacks coming in i usually meet them as early as i can get into a good position and snipe them as they're arriving so i, I usually take a different tactic to it but you do have the ability to have them hunker down or restrict them to a certain area and they'll go straight to that area animals right there will that's a good tactic for them get them off to a to a restricted area um obedience what are you? Slaughter, okay. Is that the one I want? Yeah, follow master while the master is doing field work, hunting, taming animals, and follow master while the master is drafted. So, the animals will be tamed. They can be trained to do various things, like haul. We want to set these guys, our retrievers, right there. We've got ham and sienna. So we have two golden retrievers that came with us. I want them to be trained in obedience, and I want them to be trained in hauling. So they'll go off and they'll haul things and bring them into your storage. But they'll also bond with somebody, usually the person that trained them, or they'll go up and nuzzle somebody and, and become their best friend. And they'll want to follow them into battle and follow them around where they go. And at least you know, at first, you really couldn't do anything about that. You had to reassociate them was someone that didn't go into battle so they would stay with that person only but now you've got the ability to turn that off and then you can restrict them to a certain area if you choose to and you can make that area in your architect zone and uh, allowed area or clear it so you then create click on it and you can choose the you know, create a name and this zone over here is going to be just for this reason and you can send them to that that's a that's a nice feature of the game you can kind of control them a little bit but i think it's time to let these guys go and there's our kind of our tutorial system hunter oh pause so colonists need bed hunters lack weapons and i forgot to assign their weapons <clears throat> so let's look at this klaus went and picked one up Ah, cool. Didn't realize that they did that. Um, character. Actually, gear. So, Klaus... Oh, he's carrying it. Okay, never mind. I didn't think they did that. Anyway, character. All the different traits, including shooting. So, Klaus is going to get what? Kind of like the assault rifle. Right in there. So, Klaus, equip assault rifle. That's a right-click gets you there, then left-click chooses. Then, if you hit the period or the comma, you can scroll through. Tomislav is capable of shooting. He's capable of melee. And we'll get into their histories to kind of explain why that is. So, let's give him a charge rifle right there. Um, moving on to Handy. Also capable. And was there anyone who was not? Rabbit more so. And Shantigo, they're all capable of it. Okay. Um... Double flames. This is how... What's the word that I want here? Burning passion. Okay. You have a, a burning passion for or a 
interested passion for. So they will skill up much quicker when they're doing whatever the skill is. So Rabbit enjoys shooting, enjoys uh, handling animals, and he enjoys growing the most. And he's got a little interest in medicine. So it kind of gives you a sense of where these characters are capable of, of going with their skills when they get there. But I think I missed somebody. Back up to Handy, then Rabbit. Rabbit, you're going to get probably the same as Klaus, so an assault rifle. <clears throat> you got that one. So normal right there. So these are the weapons they brought with them. Brought a couple of swords, a couple of snipers. The snipers are going to be important, but they're not all that great to hunt with. So... You know, I think probably Klaus should have a sniper, though. He's going to be more of the, the warden or the sheriff character in here. So he's the one who's probably going to be taking him out at long range. I'm guessing. Um, got to check out their stats. Their vision will deal with how good a shot they are. Um, there's, there's lots of different uh, skills to, to think about in there. Tomislav will let's see you are equipping already so i've already kind of run through in a random order back to handy rabbit chantigo so you then can go for probably the uh the other charge rifle why am i not seeing you that one's already been dealt with right somebody's carrying it right there okay equip that one and then who did i miss let's let them all collect all right missed I really missed Handy? I really missed Handy. Okay. Well, what weapon's not been picked yet? One of the assaults? Right there. Handy, why don't you um, equip this one? Handy's wanting to go build a build a bed or a wall or something. That's why. So they're automatically going to start doing whatever was, we'll, we'll say, Handy work. <clears throat> Her first one, besides these, which are very rare to ever be used, is Construct. So Handy is hauling wood to door blueprint. So 75 is the most she can carry at one time. She's going to carry all of it. And she's going to drop it off also at all the different uh, different things in there. So she filled up she filled up the 25 out of 25 wood that was needed for the door. The uh, 15 of the 35 of the wooden bed that was left because the other 35 of 35 went into here. And there's 8 units of work left out of probably 10. So she's working away at that. And we'll see that she created a shoddy wooden bed. So even though she's pretty good, pretty skilled, uh, she's still got some practice to do to, to really get her skills up to the point to where she's really dependable. Door. I don't know if the doors have a skill or have a quality level. And she's roofing over. Um, don't think so. So she's going to roof over this area. The rest of it's already mountain over the top of it. And a little void right there, taking care of all the roof. Then she's off to what? I guess she's going to build before she deconstructs. Okay. Well, let's fill the rest of these in. I'm going to have her manually deconstruct. So I can click her and say, can you take care of this for me? You know, they've got a, a certain uh, priority scheme built into them. They want to do this kind of job first and that kind of job second. So sometimes you have to, if you want something done quickly, you have to just manually do it. I want these two done quickly. You were what? You want to build a roof over there, but go ahead and take this one down so I can set that bed blueprint so I can walk away from this. I have a feeling this episode's gone quite long, hasn't it? I think my timer was running for a few minutes before I started, but I'm seeing something close to an hour already. So we're going to have to shut this one down soon. But I do want to set this blueprint in. Structure, furniture, blueprint. So spin you around with the E right there. Okay. So you're going to continue constructing, and then you're going to head over here and construct. Otherwise, what's happening? Tomislav is hauling. So he's hauling uh, wood over. Apparently there's nothing to clean. Because that was his next number one, right? Tomislav down below. He was cleaning first. And there's nothing to deal with right now. So he went to his first number two. That qualified. When there's no more to haul, he's going to go to his first number three. He'll give uh, Handy some help constructing. Though he's also capable of mining... We'll do that. That's his first number two. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, so Shantigo cleaning dirt. So he apparently found, he, he realized there's some dirt that was made right over here when this was torn down. He's going to go take care of that. Um, Rabbit should be out here 
planting. He's getting the heel root in. Good, because that takes a long time to grow, and we're going to need that soon. We're going to run out of medicine. And Klaus, you're probably just in a constant uh, run of hauling. Hauling glitter rolled medicine to stockpile one. So soon they're going to get this one built, get a roof over it. We'll see. It's deteriorating due to being unroofed. So it's still 100 out of 100 in quality. So it's not deteriorating quickly. Wood will deteriorate also. If you think of it, wood sitting outside, it'll rot and, and uh, start to crack in the sun. So it's got to be under a roof as well. Of course, the food does too. Our packaged survival meals already dropped down to 49 out of 50 on their quality because they're already starting to deteriorate out there in the sun. Anyway, let this run for a little bit, but I've got to get this episode turned off. This is going to be a fun series. It is. So do leave a comment below if you want to be put in the list of the uh, of the characters that are going to be coming after this. I'm planning on going into at least one more uh, colony. We are allowed to take trips now in RimWorld. And we can even plan our trip with the waypoints. You can right-click right here. And what does it take to get over to this one over here? Well, that's going to take three days, and it'll kind of give you a sense of what supplies you've got to have to get there. And we can head over there and set up a new colony. So we've got to decide what we want to do. And as we get further into the game, those that are, you know, player characters in here that uh, are kind of role-playing their character will all kind of have a... Uh, a chance to give a, a sense of do we want to head over to the horse lip swamp and see what the swamp's like do we want to get into an arab shrubland and see what that's like to 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 you know create a colony and so we're going to go with more than one colony in this playthrough and it's going to be a long-term playthrough we're going to enjoy this one so do leave a, a family friendly name that you'd like to be called if you want to be part of this and preferably folks that are going to commit to watching the series you know day in and day out and and uh kind of kind of jump in and, and uh you know jump into the comment section and have fun with everyone else we want a nice interactive comment section in there but i'm gonna have to call this one done i am way way long in this episode but uh there's, there's a lot more to come. So with that, I'm going to call this one done. This has been Noble Rambler. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.